Um, and then you can just imagine, I mean, you've actually experienced what like a Zoom call with 15 five-year-olds is. It's just like, yeah. it's amazing. It's like, like you'll just see like a cat will come through or someone will like just like everyone will be yelling and then someone will just like slowly like hold up I don't know, like a tinker toy that they have made to offer to everyone. Four or five of them addressed as Elsa, and yeah, there's... Totally, absolutely. Just good, yeah, the... it's right, right? There's theater in the dark times, it's just Elsa theater, it's fine. <laughs> I'm in uh, northwest London, and uh, it's about eight o'clock, and uh, we've just had our applause for the NHS every <laughs> once a week, and at eight o'clock everyone applauds. So I've just had the window open, and we've been listening to everyone applaud, and there's so much noise. It's really inspiring and, and beautiful. Um, it's me, my wife, and my son, my five-year-old son are here together, um, and which is glorious. <laughs> but it's I mean I mean I, I feel uh, all other parents I feel are just uh, myself very much included and realizing just how I mean hopefully we're all going to emerge, emerge out of this with the profound new respect for teachers for right. service staff for um, the NHS for people who really are um, undervalued in our society hopefully we're going to come out of this with I don't know more compassion more uh, a sense of giving them more value in our society I really hope so Yeah, I mean, all over um, Zoom, and which is a brand new thing to me, and FaceTime and all of those things, and um, checking in on people via what, I mean, my the phone is just lighting up constantly with um, people alternating between panic and sending funny memes um, and recipes and, um, you know, adding to Spotify playlists and things like that. And we've been doing, with our son, we've been doing... Um, sort of dance parties with his friends and trying to get together and do maths meet, they call it maths meetings and trying to do some, you know, trying to make it normal as, uh, as possible. And, and occasionally people will um, ring our doorbell or knock on our door and we'll open the door and they'll be standing at the end of the driveway and we'll have a conversation and um, across there. Well, I don't know if you've done similar things over there, but we've been doing all, everyone needs, we've been putting up um, rainbows in our windows for people when they do their, um, government authorized one day one uh, bit of exercise around the block um, per day we can we can give them um, rainbows to spot and things like that so there's all sorts of and we went out and we did chalking on the on the uh, we left messages for people and we did like a, a race track around our block with like jump five times and spin in a circle and start and finish and all of that sort of thing so um, yeah it's strange strange times Yeah, I've, um, uh, I'm finding it hard to, I mean, I'm, I'm exhausted all the time. I don't know if anyone else is feeling like this. And, and, and I get to the end of the day and, um, I mean, trying to work and trying to parent uh, and homeschool at the same time is kind of uh, exhausting anyway. But um, getting to the end of the day and I've got so, a pile of books by the bed and I'm just sort of dipping in and out of them. And actually what we end up doing <laughs> most of the time is re-watching the American version of The Office uh, and we've watched it, I'm sure, straight through at least three times. And we're going through, we're now on season four and, you know, <laughs> watching several episodes of that a day. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I've started DJing again. I used to do that all the way through university. It's sort of one of the ways I, I kind of got through university and, and I got back into it um, in the last few years and, uh, and like played at people's weddings and birthday parties and stuff. And for the last few months, we've been doing sort of, impromptu back to mine all back to mine sort of parties in my um kitchen uh with the parents from my son's school on a friday i think we'll end up his you know him and his friends will be playing mario kart in the living room and we'll be in the kitchen having a dance party and um i sort of really missed that way of connecting with people so i've just been i mean i'm no good at it really but i enjoy it and it's a nice meditative space to get into and and that's been fun to sort of go um to go over instagram live or something and just have you know usually it's about four people watching um uh, sending requests and stuff but it's people in from all around the world there's people in Germany and people in LA and um, people in New Zealand and stuff and all they're having a house party together and that's that's been really lovely and I think um, kind of discovering this new way of connecting has been um, really nice and um, other ways of keeping art alive I mean we're doing so much 
crafts and painting and drawing and Lego and mm -hmm. um, building of things and making a flower floral bouquet out of um, egg cartons and um, my son st started doing this thing which we, we showed him some online um, drawing classes people like um, uh, Rob Bidolf and Mo Willems and, and people have been doing these classes online uh, and he then started doing his own classes for me where he'll just sort of nice. give me the instructions of what he's drawing and it'll be sort of abstract shapes and then r very strict rules about how to colour it all in and, and just trying to copy him and seeing um, you know how his brain works when he's got a pen in his hand has been um, kind of a nice way of connecting with him and um, yeah I mean it's it's it's, I was, you know, I was saying before we started recording that um, finding these moments of sort of um, kind of the, the new context of all of this is making us feel very grateful for a, a lot of uh, what we have and the time that we have and the time that we can spend together and the fact that we have space, the fact that we have outdoor space, the fact that we are, you know, we are not on the front line. Um, my sister is a doctor and she's just had um, COVID quite badly and she's through it now, thank God. She's, she's much, much better now. She's still exhausted, but she says she's, you know, um, in her words, she's 85%. But it got really, it got really scary for a bit. And, um, and I know people who've uh, lost people and um, it's, it's a really... Uh, I have no idea what it's going to be like when we emerge from this, what it'll have done to us, what it'll have done to, you know, the five-year-olds like my son and his friends to have lived through this, however long it lasts and to come out of it, what that will have, what impact that will have on them long-term and how they um, interact with the world and think about the world. The fact that we, you know, we've had moments where we've gone to the park and uh, he's had to sort of jump out of the way of people to keep the two meter distance and, um, seeing people in masks and seeing people you know sh supermarkets where there's barely anything on the shelves i mean it's such a um i don't know what impact it's having on me let alone <laughs> what impact it's having on him but he's he's dealing with it well i think um there's the occasional odd question out of nowhere about the virus or about death or you know these massively profound questions that as a parent you get no warning for <laughs> and have to yeah. sort of pull something out of nowhere and, and hope that you're not going to say something incredibly damaging to their psyche <laughs> um uh, but it's um yeah trying to trying to just um keep art alive yeah, I, I guess, I mean, it, and there's a lot that I'm working on, which I, work, when I do, when we're giving each other time to work, and um, I, I'm finding that really uh, helpful, actually, having some things to focus on. I'm finding inventing people and characters and situations quite hard, um, which mm. is tricky, that's my job, but it's the, the absurdity of it, and, the, and trying to work out what world and what the rules are of a world when we're living in such dystopian times right now. Um, and trying to write about it as well, but not knowing how uh, how bad taste something will seem, or so how out of date, or how naive something will seem in the, in a week's time, let alone in, in a year, um, is really hard. But doing things, I've, I'm working on a couple of adaptations, and and that's been much easier and much more. Um, you can really escape into something like that and and there's sort of problems to solve you can you, you know you have a you have a particular task for something you can focus on and look at and, um sorry i'm rambling i'm answering so no, that's questions. great you know how i am <laughs>
what it's going to feel like, whether it's going to feel passe, whether it's going to feel naive, whether it's going to be feel really bad taste. I mean, I think as a, as a writer, um, I'm sort of trying to um, uh, just uh, pay attention as much as possible and listen and read and, and connect with people. Um, and, and I think it might be too soon to have any profound thoughts, if I ever have any profound thoughts about anything, about this um, uh, situation we're in. We'll have to wait and see what it does to us. I've uh, I've avoided going to the theatre for so so long, really. I mean, I I uh, I, I suppose I, I do go often, but I don't go as often as I used to. Maybe that's partly becoming a parent, and partly because um, so much theatre just seems um, sort of uh, boring and irrelevant and pretentious and um, out of touch and um, unconnected, disconnected from the. the contemporary life <laughs> which is pretty damning, damning about my chosen field but um uh i i the the idea now of being amongst people the things that we took for granted the idea of going into a big room full of strangers and sharing an experience together now sort of feels like impossibly romantic and optimistic and um uh, i i i can't wait i suppose to just have that sensation of experiencing something in, in a crowd full of people and, and um, going to concerts and going to uh, see, you know, uh, I, I think I, that's what I was saying about The Office, was um, watching The Office or reading these these books at the moment and um, finding it so odd that people are around people in these books that were written or these shows that were made long before the crisis that... Um, it now seems so strange that we've adapted so quickly to this new normal where we have to keep two meters diff distance and self isolate and um, that, you know, watching the American office and, and um, people in the conference room or the meeting room. Um, and you think that's just, why are you doing this? It seems crazy. And, and um, I don't know how, how quickly we've adapted and what that will do to us over the, the long term or how long this lasts and whether we'll ever shift that or whether we'll just once this is all over and we're allowed back out of our houses whether we'll adapt quickly again to that and start taking everything for for granted again or um yeah i mean at theater with it whether it'll change i mean theater is you know, obviously communal in its nature and in, in is live and is experiential and it's heartbreaking to see all these theaters going dark and that um these these cultural focal places and, and community hubs and and ways where there's so few places actually nowadays that you can collectively experience something that you can come together with people who are way beyond your lived experience and and witness a story about people who are who are beyond your lived experience and stretch and exercise your compassion and your um your empathy and um uh, and sort of uh, come out hopefully with more understanding of people who aren't like you and more connection and more understanding of how you are like the people that you maybe didn't think you were and God, the world needs that a lot at the moment. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, I, I want to, I'm looking forward to seeing my family. I'm looking forward right. to... <laughs> uh to, to get my son back to his grandparents for a bit and um for us all you know we're doing a like a lot of families we're organizing a zoom quiz night i think for the weekend and um and that'll be great but uh, but it's not you know i think particularly my mum and dad are, are feeling frustrated that they can't come and help and my sister having been ill they, they you know they feel very i can't speak for them but I, you know we we're all feeling like we just want to reach out and be there for people. And it's really frustrating. You know, we know people who are immunosuppressed or um, older or um, have asthma or, you know, the people that we are trying to do what we can for them. You know, F's been doing um, click and collect sort of uh, grocery shops for people and dropping off people. And, and um, uh, but it's, 
you know, look for the helpers. How, how do we help? And, and um, you know, I, I, how do we, how can we, as you say, how can we celebrate the, the people who have been working throughout this time to keep everything going and to look after, looking after the, the people who are the most vulnerable? And, um, uh, yeah, like queuing for a coffee. I'm looking forward to just going and getting a coffee in the morning and <laughs> stupid stuff and going and getting my laptop out in a, in a cafe and um, all these things that we sort of took for granted. My kid going to football club or dance class or, or any of these things being able to drop him off at school and just chat to the other parents in the school grounds and um it's it's all it's all gonna yeah i think we're a way off it but um mm. it's such normal things that i never even thought were particularly special that um are gonna feel amazing yeah. i hope they've continued to feel amazing for a oh. while when we come back <laughs>